So this is a short video with some information about the essay that is coming up. So when you get into the course, go to Assignment Descriptions and Sample Assignments. Then uh, remember there's formatting a journal <clears throat> or an essay. Go into Essay. There's a lot of information here. All right, I have the essay directions, which I've already downloaded. So let me just open that. Bitty. Looks like this. I have said it needs to be three full pages plus a works cited page. And it needs to be done in Times New Roman 12 or something that is the equivalent, not Times New Roman 14 or, I don't even know, uh, Arial 10. Try to keep it, it's a, approximately this size font. Most of the essays are longer <coughs> because of all, you're working on it slowly. You must use you must document you must use information from our text you do not need to find any outside information the text is enough and it must be cited using mla format and it must have a works cited page so i don't want to read this to you i would like you to read it for yourself i just want to hit some of the highlights I'm going to give you two options for this. I like options. I'm going to give you two options for this essay. But let's look here. No matter which option you choose, be sure to analyze how the situation informs your understanding of the very important word here, functions of nonverbal communication, the characteristics of nonverbal communication, the types of nonverbal communication and the influence on of culture on how we manage our impressions using nonverbal communication. So basically what this is saying is you need to make sure in your essay that you talk about <coughs> functions of nonverbal communication, characteristics of nonverbal communication, types of nonverbal communication <coughs> and concepts from chapter three culture. So <clears throat> your choice is to do an experiment or to do a, an observation. The experiment is where you will violate a cultural norm using some kind of nonverbal communication. I always use the example of you stand backwards in an elevator. Okay, because that's, that's not what we do. And I want to make sure that you do something that's not going to get you into too much trouble. Um, let's see. Sometimes what students have opted to do if, if they've decided to do the experiment is they have a friend or family member who actually does the, the nonverbal norm violation and the student who's writing the paper is the observer because it is, it can be difficult to both break the norm and observe people's reaction. That's going to depend on what you choose. The other one is to go someplace and observe. Go to a restaurant, go to a park, go to a library, go to a family get-together. And basically, whichever option you choose, I'm trying to see if I can get these both on the same page, Whichever option you choose, you're, you're doing the same kinds of things. Okay, so you're going to tell me what you're going to do and why. And you're also going to tell me uh, the kinds of nonverbal communication you're going to use to break the rules or down below. Um, you know, why did you choose to observe in this specific place? Number two is you need to come up with a hypothesis. I'm looking at this as if it's a, a, a scientific experiment or a sociological experiment. So the hypothesis ha says 
basically, this is how people normally act in this situation. The, these are the norms of behavior. I'll keep using the elevator. In an elevator, people get in, they push the button, uh, the number of the floor they want to go to, the, they turn around with their back to the wall and they face the door. When people come in, they don't make eye contact. Mostly they look at their shoes or they look at their phone. Okay. <clears throat> The hypothesis would be how do you, will also include how do you think people would will react to the violation and will certain people react differently from others? So you say, you know, I'm going to go in and I'm going to greet people. Hey, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great day. So what do you think people are going to do? And do you think everybody's going to react the same? Do you think there will be differences based on age, based on sex, based on ra race? I know that those are not always easy to to determine. So, just anyways, when you when you um, hold on, let me let me not get ahead of myself. Uh, if you're doing the observation, you are saying I'm going to go to the park and I'm going to be observing the the playground area, and this is how I think. Um, adults will re will act, and this is how I think children will act, and why. Okay, you're going to do that first. You're going to send that to me. I am going to give you feedback, and I am going to say, yes, good to go, or no, I want you to work on this some more. Then you're going to go out, and you're going to actually do the observation, <clears throat> and you're going to write up what you saw, and for that when you're writing up what you what you saw in either the experiment or the observation, you have to make sure that you talk about the different types of nonverbal communication. This is in chapter seven. There's a whole section, many pages on that. I will give you feedback on that. Maybe ask you to give me some more information. <clears throat> then the next thing that you're going to do is you are going to do um, an analysis. So what were the characteristics of nonverbal communication that you saw? What were the functions of nonverbal communication that you saw? There are, I always forget, uh, five, five characteristics and six functions. You don't have to talk about all of them. Generally, I say to students, pick two of each. All right. So and it's the same, it's roughly the same thing for both the observation and the experiment. So here is my suggested timeline. If, if we work backwards, you absolutely must have this in by July 15th. And so in order for you to have time, you to write it and me to have a time to read it and give you feedback, here's what I've come up with. I want you to <clears throat> give me information on number one and number two by June 10th, and then I will very, <clears throat> excuse me, June 10th is a Saturday. I will get you feedback, I want to say immediately. And then once I say, yes, your hypothesis has been approved, you can go out and do your experiment or violation. <clears throat> After this, we can get, a, there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of wiggle room here. What I want you to do is once you've done your observation or experiment, you're going to do number three and number four. What did you see and how did what you see compare to what you thought you would see? And make sure that you talk about the different kinds of nonverbal communication. All right. Once you do that, I get it. I give you feedback and then you're going to do the analysis and the analysis is also, I just want you to put it all together in a rough draft. So I, June, I'm sorry, July 8th is really, it, I, I, it's, I would like to have it by then because it will take me a little while to give you feedback and then to give you time to revise it. But if you notice in the schedule, the week of, let me look at my calendar, the week of July 10th, we, I, I don't have any new material. That is a time for us 
to meet if you would like to do that. So let's say you don't have, you don't work on Tuesdays and you would like to meet with me on Tuesday, July 11th. Then as long as you get me the essay about a day before, I should, I, I will have a chance to read it and then we can meet and go over it. So as I said, this is the suggested timeline. I set this up to make it relatively easy for students and also easy on myself. All right, so let me get out of here. The rubric is here. There's an overview of the essay assignment. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of that because I'm doing this right now. There are some pointers for the essay. It's a long video. Here are some past topics in case you're stuck. And then I have some sample essays. I'm going to include two essays from this past semester here. I would like you to know that all of the students have given me permission to share this essay with you. Most people said they were okay with me using their name, but there were two who wanted to be anonymous. So please take a look at this, read it over. If you have any questions, definitely post it in the discussion under the general course questions, because if you have questions, probably other students do too.